Welcome back to Past Industrial Channel. In our previous video, we discussed the types of tasks that machine learning solves. Whether the one that you are dealing with implies image classification or prediction of certain values, you'll need to deliver a trained machine learning model to solve it. Today, I will share with you why the delivery of an AMED model is often not enough for a successful project delivery. And we will figure out what you can do about it. A common approach to managing machine learning projects leans on deploying trained models manually and usually takes the following steps. Define the problem and set the goal. Obtain the required data for training. Train, evaluate and fine-tune the models. Present the trained model and integrate it into the existing workflow. This workflow suggests that a trained model should be the final result or a delivery artifact of a successfully completed project. However, this approach is flawed for a number of reasons. The world is constantly evolving, stimulated by disruptive technologies, which leads to continuously growing amounts of data. Therefore, the data which machine learning engineers have to process to train the models is changing too. A trained model delivered as an artifact can only meet clients' immediate needs based on the data it was given. But it will prove ineffective in the long run, since it doesn't automatically adjust to the changes in the datasets. Updates in the datasets used for training result in changes in the model, leading to downgrading its accuracy. This is especially important for projects in healthcare. The higher accuracy the model shows in the classification of medical images, for example, the higher the chances that it can assist professional medics in making accurate and timely diagnosis. Usually, the most important factor when evaluating the success of a machine learning project is the higher the accuracy, the better the machine learning model performs. However, it's worth noting that this is true only for balanced validation datasets, those containing an equal number of examples for each category of tasted data. To optimize the metrics of the model, room for numerous experiments is needed. Experimenting with different model architectures, pre-processing code, and the hyperparameters essentially retrains the model multiple times. What is a hyperparameter? What the f is this? It's a value that humans set to define the process of training. They can be numerous and include the number of examples in the training batch, number of neurons in each layer, or number of iterations. Hyperparameters are set before the learning process begins. For instance, if we train a model to spot tumors in medical images, hyperparameters can be the size of the image or the learning rate. Here is how it works. First, we choose a set of hyperparameters for the experiment. Then, we train the model defined by these hyperparameters. Afterwards, we assess the result. If the target metrics are not optimal, we tune the model either by modifying its architecture, adding or removing layers, or by changing the hyperparameters. Through this process, the training dataset and the model architecture changes. On top of that, an enormous number of experiments need to be carried out to achieve an acceptable level of accuracy. Carrying out this task manually will take lots of time and effort. One eternity later. This is why it makes sense to deliver an automated infrastructure for the process, a machine learning pipeline. But we'll talk about it in our next video. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned.